This week, Canon finally released the R7 and the R10. Now, the R7 is a camera that I've really been waiting for, as when I was looking to purchase the R6 earlier this year, rumors of the R7 were swirling about that it would have a lot of the same features of the R6, but in a crop sensor body. Since I come from using the Red Komodo, which is a crop sensored RF body as well, it did intrigue me, but I didn't want to wait for the camera to come out, so I went and purchased the R6. Now that the R7 is here, a question that a lot of people are asking is, should I get the R6 or the R7? Because the R7 seems to have a lot of... Well, it looks like that's going to be going on all day, so let's take this outside. Okay, so I had to get out of there because the alarm was going off, but I wanted to make this video today because there's a lot of questions, especially if you don't care about full frame or APS-C, which camera is better between the R6 and the R7, because when it comes to the video specs, they are extremely similar. Now, this isn't gonna be a technical review. This is more of a spec versus spec because we're not really going to see some high-end, especially video reviews, probably for a few weeks until people actually get their hands on the camera. Now, the other thing Thing is you're gonna notice that I'm filming this a little bit vlog style today handheld and that's gonna go along with one of the pros for the R6 which I'll get into in a bit but when it comes to the video specs the R6 and the R7 are very close they both shoot 4k 10 bit up to 4k 60 in C log 3 so for video it's kind of a question of if you have a lot of full-frame glass then the R6 may be the better choice. But someone like me, I actually started with the R6 with mostly Super 35 glass and a few RF lenses that are full frame, of course. That being said, one thing that I'll be touching upon when I talk about my R6 review, which I filmed, but now that the R7's out, I kind of want to redo it because there's some points I made that have changed now. A lot of the lower cost RF lenses, like this 16 mil that we're using right now, they're really great for YouTube, vlogging, stuff like that. But when you put them up to higher end glass, even Canon's LRF glass or Sigma's art glass, there's really no comparison as far as image quality. The art glass and the L glass is a lot better than a lot of this low end RF glass. So that's one of the things that it's why I say if you're shooting Super 35 APS-C already, well, the R7 may be a really good option for you because when I switched to the R6, I ended up having to invest in some full-frame glass, some good quality full-frame glass, in order to get the most out of this camera. Whereas if the R7 was out when I was looking for it, I could have used all the lenses I had already and saved $1,000 over the R6. All right, so I apologize for how windy the audio was. It was so hot, so windy, that uh, I just decided to come back and do the rest of this inside. So we are filming this right now on the EOS R6 with the Sigma 24-70 to 2.8 and Canon's VND adapter. That's one of the benefits of using EF glass on the RF mounted cameras is you can use things like the VND adapter. You can probably also see a little bit of a difference in the 16 millimeter I was using outside before and this 24 to 70 at 24 millimeters. I also used the 16 mil in the beginning of the video so I'll put these two side by side and you could see kind of reinforces that the EF glass and the L glass is a bit better than the lower end RF glass. But anyways, when it comes to why you would want the EOS R6 or the R7, it comes down to a few different modes that both of the cameras offer, but slightly different. So as I said before, both cameras have 10-bit C-Log3. So you can get really great dynamic range out of both of the cameras. For which camera is better in dynamic range, we'll have to wait and see some footage when people get the camera actually in their hands. So I'm not going to say which one's better when it comes to C-Log3 and dynamic range, but here's where I can say which one's better. When it comes to shooting in the 4K 24p modes, in the EOS R6, you get a downscaled from 5.5K image, so it is always gonna be really nice. When it comes to the R7, there's a few different modes. Kind of like the R5, it has not necessarily an HQ mode, but it has a fine mode, which has downscaled from 7K, 24p, and 30p video. So you are gonna get really sharp images if you use that mode. You will get some cons with that, such as less battery life, but that's kind of the trade-off of getting a down sample from the entire sensor. But when it comes to 4K 60 on the R7, that's gonna be pixel bin. So that's where you may want something like the R6, where no matter what in all of the modes, they're downscaled from 5.5K. 
Another deciding factor is going to be whether you take a lot of stills or video. Now when it comes to the stills mode, the R7 is a 32 megapixel sensor versus the R6 which is a 20 megapixel sensor. Now for my uses, I actually use the R6 more for video. So I would say if you're more of a video shooter, if you're doing vlogs, YouTube content, the R6 may make more sense just because you get a wider field of view, it's a little bit better in low light, so you'll get a few more features on the video side of things on the R6. But on the R7, although it may not be as good in low light, you're going to have much higher megapixel stills. So if you're shooting sports, if you're shooting wildlife, a lot of that stuff where you want a little bit of a crop in on your lenses and you also want really high megapixel photos, well then the R7 is going to make a lot more sense in that department. Another factor is what kind of lenses you already own. If you own a lot of Super 35 glass, APS-C glass, like I kind of mentioned in the beginning with me and my Komodo, well then it may make more sense to use the R7 over the R6, especially because if you use crop sensor glass on the R6, it forces you to use its crop video mode. I have a video on it, I'll put it in the card above in a description below, but the short of it is the crop sensor video mode on the R6 isn't that great, and the crop sensor photo mode isn't that great either, versus you don't really have a choice, it's always crop sensor. It's always gonna be a 1.6 crop of full frame on the R7, if you don't mind the crop, you're gonna have a much higher resolution for photos on the R7, plus you'll get really great video quality at that crop sensor 1.6 crop of full frame when using crop sensor lenses or full frame lenses. So there's just some things to juggle. There also is the price. The R7 is $1,500 brand new, where the EOS R6 is $2,500. So if money is an issue and you're not gonna be doing things like vlogging, if you're really gonna be filming other people, other subjects, well then you could save a decent amount of cash and pick up an R7. Inherently, since the R6 is a full frame sensor, you are gonna get a little bit better low light performance on the R6 versus the R7. Now, how much of a difference? I couldn't tell you because I don't have my hands on the camera, but I have heard that the native ISO is a little bit different on the R7. I would assume it's a little bit lower. So it would be interesting to play around with both cameras and see how much of a difference there is just in low light scenarios. Even if you are doing YouTube videos, I would say if you're not gonna be doing vlogging, but you're gonna film yourself from a distance, you could absolutely get away with the R7. But just remember, it's the 1.6 crop. So you're gonna have to put the camera a little bit further back and you're not gonna have as blurry as a background as you would if you were using the R6 just because you have more of a field of view. You can get that lens a little bit closer to you on the R6, giving you a more shallow depth of field. Although having a full frame sensor definitely is a factor in getting a much shallower depth of field, it's also getting that sensor closer to you, getting a little bit more of a shallow depth of field just because physically the lens is closer to you, it's closer and it's focused, which will give you a little bit more background blur. Overall, the EOS R7 is now the cheapest Canon RF camera that can shoot 10-bit 4K60 with C-Log3 at $1,500. So if budget, price is an issue, the R7 is the way to go. Some other features that the R6 and the R7 have, both of them have the same internal image stabilization system, so they both have IBIS, which is really great. They both have a headphone and microphone jack, which is absolutely needed for content creation. They both have a flip-out screen, which again, content creators love flip-out screen. I love being able to see myself right here without having to have an external monitor. And of course, they both share the RF mount, so you can use RF lenses on both cameras. You can use RF to EF adapters and use your EF glass and get great performance out of the autofocus on both the R6 and the R7 using that adapter. It's pretty much the first camera I've ever had that I've adopted glass, although it is Canon glass, to the camera and got stellar autofocus performance. I mean, when I'm using my 70 to 200, even on the R6 in the 4K 60 mode, it's head tracking sometimes the wake borders that I'm filming and I don't even have to pull focus. So the focusing system in these newer Canon RF bodies is absolutely spectacular. There's a lot going on with both of these cameras. I hope to rent an R7 in the next few weeks once they become available and actually do a side-by-side -side comparison because I think a lot of people like me who use the R6 on a daily basis for a lot of content creation are going to want a second body. I definitely have wanted a second body, but I didn't want to go up to an R5. And I think for someone like me, the R7 makes a lot of sense 
but I definitely want to have my hands on it. I don't want to be one of the first beta testers to pick up this camera. But what are your thoughts on the R7? Do you like the R6, the R7, or do you not want any of them and you're just going for the R5, R5C? Let me know in the comments below. If you got value out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell. And until next time, thank you for watching, everybody. My name's Jeff Fagan, and I will see you in the next video.